So once upon a time, there lived a woman. She was 200 years old. This is her picture. She just had a great day. She ran a marathon. She did this very, very flexible. She was very flexible today in her yoga. She's as wise and compassionate as only a healthy 200-year-old can be. <laughs> this is science fiction. But for us uh, biologists now in the beginning of the 21st century, we think we can see the beginnings of a path to get to this possibility, even though it will <coughs> take a century. It has to do with the way the cells in our body make decisions. For example, when we're wounded, the cells divide in order to repair us. And they die in order not to become cancer cells. As I say this sentence, there's a million cells dying and a million cells dividing to keep me well maintained. And cells also cr count time. If I take cells from a baby and put them in a dish, they'll divide 40 times, they count, and stop. And if I take cells from an old person, they'll divide twice. And the reason they count time is to execute well defined programs of aging, how we slow down our repair processes. It's all inside this biochemical computer that's inside each cell that takes these decisions. It's made of little molecular machines in the cell, they're called proteins, which interact chemically. These are the arrows here, their interactions. In the last, I should say that uh, errors in this computer can lead to diseases. It takes two or three mistakes in order to make a cell divide without control and give you cancer, for example. In the last 20 years, there's been great steps to understanding the components here. Whereas it took years to understand a single arrow 20, year, 20 years ago, now in a single experiment, we can understand 10,000 arrows, the computers of the entire cell. But this means massively complex objects. And that's what made me come from theoretical physics into biology, to understand the most complicated object in the universe that we can actually manipulate and understand. And when I started my lab, I wanted to make a map of this computer in a live cell and I used the power of biology to make cells that light up fluorescently when each part of the computer was uh, active. And it didn't work. Experiments, just I couldn't get that fluorescence to work. And in my frustration, I decided to make a map of all the interactions that are already known. They were discovered by hundreds of labs. And when we look at that picture, we discovered that this, comp this network is much simpler than we imagined. It's just made of a handful of recurring patterns, circuits. We call them network motifs, like motifs in a stained glass window. But these are modular computational elements. Each one does a certain kind of decision, and you can put them together in order to understand the logic of the entire cell's computer. The same elementary circuits are found in cells across organisms and all tissues of our body, and they give us a language to understand for the first time uh, how cells think. Not only can we understand it, <laughs> but we can now build it. So instead of thinking about the biology that exists in the cell, we can make the biology that can be. And there's an amazing convergence of technology where we can read the DNA and very precisely write into the DNA to put in circuit modules into cells. So already scientists have put in clocks into cells, switches, simple logical circuits. And as we think of it as a challenge for a whole century, you can imagine reprogramming the cell's computers. This means putting in, for example, fail-safe devices to prevent mistakes for all diseases, cancers, diabetes, etc. And resetting maybe contemplate those clocks that count the time, that control the programs of youth, fertility, aging. It's kind of scary, but to try to, to play with the basic timelines that have defined uh, human beings since we, before we were ever human. Uh, in order to do that, as I said, considering it for the 21st century, what do we need to do? We need to let scientists follow their curiosity because we make discoveries when we go on a path and discover something else. That's what happened, for example, with the most powerful technology we have now for editing genes. It was discovered when Jennifer Doudna was thinking about why, how bacteria resist viruses and discovered this enzyme that can precisely cut DNA, and it's a wonderful tool for us. Um, and uh, I think it will also take a century for us to understand uh, what it means to make uh, such alterations to our very personal biology. But uh, I, think, I think we should do it because uh, the potential to one day meet this 200-year-old, uh, very wise and compassionate person is something that uh, we can contemplate as a scientific adventure to help us see how far human growth and potential can take us. Mm. So trying to think about how synthetic biology can influence healthcare uh, and this kind of <coughs> vision. Uh, I hope you, hope you agree with me that it's an interesting proposition. Mm -hmm. It's very exciting to be a scientist.
biologist right now. I can tell you. So thank you very much. Thank you.